Hello, my lovelies. Now, in a moment, I'm going down to town to collect my very tall friend, Steve, and bring him back here for lunch. And he's something of a professional fleet expert on modern cars, but also a classic car enthusiast, owner, driver, and collector. So I think I might go down in Boo, my freelander, and get him to drive it and see what he thinks. Okay, off we go into town to collect a very tall man and feed him some Momo. Oh, the mighty roar. I must say, the novelty of clambering into Boo has yet to wear off. I am absolutely in love with this car. It's Friday today and of course I picked this car up from South Wales on Monday and I've been using the uh, been using the car daily and um, familiarity has brought immense affection I thoroughly like and enjoy the sensation of driving a cluggy old Land Rover Although it's not all that old and it's certainly not all that cluggy. It's, um, it's actually a rather nice place to be. But you do, the last time I had a feeling driving a car like this was when I had my old Discovery. As you would expect on a car of some age, there are, um, there are a few foibles that um, I'm kind of working my way through, but there are many lovely surprises. I tried the uh, the hill descent thing function, uh, whatever you call it, uh, last night, and that still works perfectly. And the car is, what, 18 years old, and has probably not had the easiest of life. I think it's been, uh, I think it's been a farm car, certainly uh, most recently it's been a farm car. But it's also rather well appointed. I'm sitting in comfortable ventilated leather seats. Uh, they're also heated. I have bum warmers. I have air conditioning. I have electric windows all round. I have power fold mirrors. I have uh, an electric tilt and slide sunshine roof. I have a six CD stack gramophone system with the hang on, I usually get this wrong, with the, the Harman Kardon enhanced sound system and a mahoosive great subwoofer in the boot, which quite frankly gives me a bloody headache. I must confess that there's also um, a feeling of correctness, a feeling that I'm in the right car. Living where I do, in a very rural area surrounded by farmland, it feels somehow correct that I should have a Land Rover. Admittedly, some of the other locals who, uh, who have moved here uh, choose to have more Japanese or, um, uh, or other mainstream 4 before vehicles, but they're off Comdens, so they don't count. The real locals, we have Land Rovers. 
The car feels solid and very tight. Uh, and although these cars do have um, a slight reputation for frailty in some areas or inherent faults or weaknesses, for me, the overriding impression is of a very solid, tight car, well put together with uh, high quality, rugged dependability. And as you might expect from the company that gives us the Range Rover, uh, an eye on the little luxuries that one enjoys in life. I've mended the floppy mirrors uh, by the expedient method of simply gluing them into the correct place. Crude, perhaps, but nonetheless very effective. Now, as is common with these, the leather, alleged leather, on the um, gear lever gator has well and truly worn away. And of course, Mike did give me a brand new leather gator to uh, to um, put on the car, but I've actually peeled off 99% of the remaining bits of leather, and I actually think it looks rather striking just in the kind of um, faded Y-front grey. So I'm half tempted to actually just leave it like that. So Steve is down here with his Alpha Spider, and <laughs> Steve being Steve, he's having his uh, brake calipers specially painted and polished. Yeah. And that means that he was going to be kicking his heels for a couple of hours while that was done. So, I offered him lunch. Though he doesn't know he's going to have to earn it by doing a test drive and review of this car on the way home. That'll be a nice surprise for him, won't it? Unbeknownst, unbeknownst to you, yeah. you are earning your lunch by doing a test drive and review on this vehicle on the way home. Okay. Yeah. Give me a <laughs> I've just imparted the glad tidings to Steve that <laughs> oh, we enjoyed it, this. unexpectedly <laughs> he would don't even think about adjusting the seat. Do you not think I've already got it in the optimum position for a correctly proportioned gentleman? This is not optimum heads touching the roof, but there we go. Oh, well, you know. Better than touching cloth, there we go. <laughs> Allow me to, uh, you might need to, oh, you might need to recline your seat actually, mightn't you? A reminder for those of you who have uh, have not previously encountered my old friend Steve. <clears throat> Steve is taller than me. I'm six five. Steve is six foot seven, and this car is suddenly looking a whole lot smaller. See, there's your fighting point on this. See. That, that clutch is sort of telepathic. You, you don't need to touch it, do you? It's incredibly light, isn't it? Yeah. With an incredibly smooth bite engagement, or whatever yeah, you call that. It just took a while to find the level, but uh, yeah. um, you, you bought this from a trade, didn't you? Yeah. But it's not retail prep, is it? No. no. You need to take it for a proper, a proper spa day. I shall do it myself. Well, that's what I mean, take it for a spa day, somewhere to get all your auto limb bits and bobs out. Absolutely. I shall, um, I shall deploy the innards of Bob, the inexpertly constructed palace of motory <laughs> delight. So I've got a shelf of Bob. I, I, I've seen your shelf of Bob. <laughs> yeah, got a bit of an auto blim. It's not a problem, it's a collection. Yeah, quite like, correct. Like, like cars, that's a collection, not a problem. You have to be impressed that Steve here just jumped in without hesitation into a... <laughs> completely strange old car and with absolute confidence 
just ploughed off in it. See, this is the joy of working in fleet for like 30 odd years, is that you just get it from one car to another. Yeah. Quite like, <laughs> what side's the indicators on? Where's your headlamps? Let's go. And it shows my long knowledge of Steve that I would trust him to do that. <laughs> Besides, so Nicky's just let me drive her Alpha down here, that's her pride and joy. What's it actually going in for? The calipers being...? Uh, just being painted red. Oh, okay. So, yeah, it's a nice little job that he's got down there. In Norm's old workshop. Yeah, he says he's been there for about a year now. Yeah. Um, he used to be mobile doing all the uh, machine polishing and detailing, but He's got that little place now and it works and there's another Alfa Romeo Quadrifoglio in there at the moment. Oh, blimey. In Dragon Green. Ooh. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this was... This was a, a main dealer part exchange down in Devon. Okay. Uh, and it went to a fellow YouTuber who buys up all of their part exchanges came as a you know a bulk deal he just yeah. bought the lot um, and then it was trade sold to another friend of mine um, uh, Mike at Classic Car Wales mm -hmm. so he went down to Devon and um, he buys a lot of, he buys the part exchanges that James at Chops doesn't want to retail uh, Mike buys a lot of them and then um, oh yeah Mazza Quattroporte, uh, and it was when we had all of the snow uh, a couple of weeks ago, whenever yeah. it was. Well, that's a nice sight, isn't it? <laughs> oh, absolutely lovely. Um, when we had all of the snow, and I'm trying to tramp around in a little uh, <laughs> a little Rover 25, uh, Mike, well, he spoke to me on a live stream, and then he rang me, mm -hmm. and he said... Uh, Right, I've got, uh, I've got the car for you, I've got the car that you need. Now I know you're a twat and you're only <laughs> having one colour, but don't worry, it's, it's, it's silver, it's the right colour for you. How many cars you got? <laughs> I said, um, I've, I've got six at the moment, right? Well, fucking sell a couple and buy, buy this, you need this. Bloody stupid. Well, it's the silver, it's sort of rover. Yeah, it's, absolutely. Uh, had your name written all over it. It did. Has it broken down yet? Not yet. No, can't, can't, did be, you can't be yours yet. Did then, you have to put the yet in? <laughs> Come on, I've got a TBR. I know it's it's, it's a characteristic of it. It's not a fault. It's not a problem. It's just character. It's had a, a fair few thousand spent in the. I was gonna, in it, the it last drives, couple of years. It, it drives fine. It no, does, no, doesn't it? Not that we've got particularly far yet, but. It's on, well, I've done, well, I drove it back from South Wales on Monday, mm -hmm. and I've used it daily since. Uh, if you just take a look down there, you might see the green alpha in the, uh... Oh, is it blue? Oh, no, I saw it. Nicky's. <clears throat> um, it's still got the briskest coupling, it's still got four-wheel drive, another Mazza. Yeah. What's happening? Is there some sort of Maserati day? Worst days to have, I guess. It's uh, still got the original prop shafts. Is that something that goes on these? Uh, the viscous coupling goes, and okay. so people drop the prop shafts and just leave them as front wheel drive. Um, it actually improves their handling and their economy and whatnot. In fact, when uh, a friend of mine said, just drop the prop in summer and put it back on that in winter. Makes sense. But it's not like it's going to be an everyday car, so mm. it can stay as four-wheel drive. But it goes so all right. The, so the four-wheel drive on this, it's, um, it's a viscous coupling, so that's it sort of does it itself without having to swap. Yeah, correct. So that's what I like about the uh, the Hilux and the Jimny I've got at home, is that they've got like locking diffs and all of the high and low range. It's, it's quite mechanical still. Yeah, yeah. What I did test last night was the patented hill descent control. That's fantastic on any car. It's rather um, impressive actually, it still works. I, I showed that to Nicky last year in the snow, we went down... Well, that road that we went up in the, um, in the Fiat... Yeah. 
I went down that in the Hilux when it was covered in ice. The hairpin road went? Yeah. Oh, Jesus. With uh, hill descent on, and it just took it like, come on, let's go faster. Definitely Italian day today. Yeah, something's going on somewhere. I'll try not to get any tickets for you on a minute. Oh, I'm very grateful. <laughs> Although, few better people to get one as you are something of an expert in wriggling out of them, as I recall. Uh, part of the job. It's not so much wriggling out of them, it's uh, Again, it's working in fleet, we just want to try and deflect it down to the person who is driving rather than... Taking it on the chin yourself. Yeah, and then uh, dealing with the argument of trying to get the money out of them. But no, I have got an Amazon wish list if, um, if you do get a parking ticket and need it. Right. Vanishing. <laughs> right. I'm rather in love with this old beast. It's not a bad piece of kit, is it? Brakes are a little um, progressive, but then I've just come from that Alpha, which is a bit on-off. It's not just you, they are. They definitely are. In need of a bit of fettling. I mean, I'm quite impressed that it, it actually feels like a Land Rover, despite it being the, you know... So what year is this? Uh, 2005. Okay, so I've had a 2002 Range Rover. Okay. The L322. Yeah. Um, and that was a two, yeah, 2002 with a BMW six cylinder engine that was made of cheese. Yes. And as much as I loved that car, it was a magnificent place to sit. It had absolutely no power in it whatsoever. Right. You put your foot down, it'd make all the noises, and the nose would lift up, but it wouldn't go much faster. Um, and when I was living at Stoke at the time, coming over to Sheffield, it was 40 quid in diesel there and back. Ouch. I'd have another one in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, well, the fact that I spent more on repairs in 18 months than I actually did buying the thing in the first place. Oh, bloody hell. But uh, air compressor, injectors. Uh, All the usual. Yeah. Well, I had a disco and. I was saying on the way down that um, this feels very a very similar driving experience to the Disco. Mm. You know, despite the fact that it's um, smaller and whatnot, you get that that same feeling of solidity. And this is it's a series one, but it's a facelift, so it kind of has the Discovery front, mm -hmm. um, and the view over the bonnet again is very similar to looking over a Disco bonnet. Not a bad spec for one of these. But HSE, isn't it? So it's got all yeah. the buttons and lights. All the buttons, leather, aircon, uh, electric roof, um, power fold mirrors. It's got the um, hard on Comfest enhanced sound system with a fucking great subwoofer in the boot that gives me a pounding headache when I was playing Oasis last night. Six stack but gramophone. What you want to do is get yourself to uh, Tesco to Chesterfield some evening. And all the boy racers are down there and just bang out some. <laughs> Dub and <it>? bass. <laughs> Neil Diamond. <laughs> so the early, uh, the early series ones had the diesels, had the Rover L series. Uh, this is the BMW M47. In the lower state of tune. Because this was the same one that we used in like the 3 Series and things like that, wasn't it? Yeah. Oh, you know, you'd play out. Yeah, it's in the lower, it's in the lower state of tune. They came in 110 or 131 PS. But it's got a thumping great turbo on it. So you've got about a thousand revs of just really quite hefty torque. That's what you need in a four-wheel drive. It's, uh, you know, but it's then like, bugger all either side of that yeah. thousand revs.
and everybody's delighted that I bought it because that means it will never snow again now. Yes, that's <laughs> well, not till next winter. So, thank you. Uh, thank you for your service. Not at all. <laughs> what is Ad Blue? I've got no idea what it is. It's um, it's an additive that goes into the exhaust system that reduces the nitrous oxides and particles and stuff like that. Um, it's, a lot of people use say it's pig piss, it's uric acid. Is it really? Some, some sort, yeah. Um, you don't want to spill it on your clothes. Right. Uh, my Hilux goes through about 10 litres every thousand miles. Seems quite hefty. It is. But then it's, it's quite a hefty truck that also drinks diesel like Best on a stag, there was something described. It. <laughs> it's not this way, isn't it? Yeah, not this right, but the next one, just that little row there, and just shove it up on the curb directly outside the cottage, middle one. That one? Uh, no, back. Back. Back one reverse. I need to sort the parking sensors. They're not. Um, the light's coming on, but I'm not getting a beep. So okay. it's usually that. There you go. It's usually that one of the sensors, well, one or more, has <coughs> fallen on its sword. Yeah. It's, uh, My portable electric telephone. <laughs> Decent little thing. It's all right, isn't it? Yeah. Full of money. Yeah. How many cars did you swap for this? Two. Uh, Swaps off. Two, and I had to come up with some cash as well. Well, I didn't directly swap the cars. I sold the cars mm. in order to raise the money. It, I, it's. Do you know what? Looking around this, it's very glamorous. Pockets everywhere. Yes. When I mean, you've got your drinks holders, you've got another one down there. Yeah. Put these little things up behind this. Yes. Then there's drink holders in, kind of drink holders in this glove box and loads of cubbies. There's another glove box under there. Do you, know what, do you know what it is? It's for all of the coffees that you need whilst you're waiting for the recovery truck. Oh, God almighty. Uh, speak from experience. <laughs> it's not a TVR, mate. I thought I'd never had one Don't of leave it in neutral. Why not? What are you thinking of? It's an old car. You can't leave, well, you can't trust the handbrake on old cars. We'll come out after lunch and it'll be down by the schools. <laughs>